be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Holy Father, at the appointed time you sent us your only begotten Son. Through his death and resurrection he gave us life, and poured out the Holy Spirit upon us. The Spirit of adoption through whom we call you our Father. With joy and holiness make us worthy to celebrate this Pentecost Sunday, the feast of the descent of your Holy Spirit upon the pure disciples in the upper room. And we thank you, your only Son and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with the church and her children. Let us raise glory, honor, and praise to the Father who has no beginning, and who is the origin of all fatherhood in heaven and on earth. <coughs> and to his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, the Word, the wisdom, and the might of the Father, and to the Holy Spirit who proceeds from the Father and the Son, the source of divine gifts, the living one who gives life to all. To the good one be glory and honor on this feast and all the days of our lives now and forever. O oh God, the Spirit, the Paraclete, in former times you spoke through the prophets, and in latter times through the apostles. You sanctify churches and make perfect the divine services. You confer the priesthood and complete baptism. You exalt the holy mysteries and you forgive sins. You are the Spirit who delves into the depths of the Father, the Spirit who makes us children of God, the Spirit of truth, wisdom, understanding, knowledge, and fear of the Lord. Now, O Holy Spirit, we implore you with the fragrance of this incense and ask you to renew your divine gifts within us. Descend upon us as you descended upon the holy apostles in the upper room. Fill us with the wisdom of your teachings. Make us temples worthy of your dignity. Quench our thirst with your grace. Enrich us with the knowledge of your mysteries. Illumine us with your great light. May we live for you and worship you with purity and with holiness. We raise glory to you and through you to the Father who is hidden 
and to the Son who is adored now and forever. Descended in the form of tongues of fire upon the holy apostles and filled them with divine gifts. Accept our incense and in your grace fill us with strength, wisdom, and holiness. Show us the riches of your heavenly gifts that you bestow on each one of us according to our worthiness. We raise glory and thanks to you, to the Father, and to his only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, now and forever. Kadishat Aloho Kadishat Hayatono Kadishat Lomo Yoto
God this day sent his spirit who came to the upper room. Joel the prophet had seen him who has come in tongues of fire. Lord, you accepted what the just had offered you. Now accept in your mercy our pure sacrifice and prayers. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Glory to the Lord of Paul and the Apostles. May the mercy of God descend upon the reader, the listeners, and upon this parish, and to children forever. Brothers and sisters, when the time for the Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together. And suddenly, there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to them as tongues of fire, which parted and came to rest on each one of them. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues, as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven staying in Jerusalem. At this sound, they gathered in a large crowd, but they were confused because each one heard them speaking in their own language. They were astounded and in amazement they asked, are not these people who are speaking Galatians? Galatians? Galileans? Then how does each of us hear them in his own native language? We are Parthians, Medes, Elamites, inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phlagria, Pamphylia, Egypt, and the districts of Libya near Cyrene, as well as travelers from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans, and Arabs. Yet, we hear them speaking in our own tongue of the mighty acts of God. They were all astounded and bewildered and said to one another, what does this mean? But others said, scoffing, scoffing, they have had too much new wine. Then Peter stood up with the 11, raised his voice, and proclaimed to them, you who are Jews, indeed all of you staying in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to my words. These people are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this was what spoke was spoken through the prophet Joel. It will come to pass in the last days God said that I will pour out a portion of my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. Indeed, upon my servants and my handmaids, I will pour out a portion of my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. And I will work wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood, fire, and a cloud of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great splendid day of the Lord. And it shall be that everyone shall be saved who calls on the name of the Lord. Praise be to God always.
Movement, praise, glory, honor, mercy, trinity. Before the proclamation of the gospel of our Savior announcing life for our souls, we offer this incense and ask for your mercy, O Lord. Peace be with you. From the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John, who proclaim life to the world, let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. Remain silent, O listeners, for the Holy Gospel is about to be proclaimed to you. Listen and give glory and thanks to the word of the living God. The Lord Jesus says, if you love me, you shall keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you always, the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it does not know him, but you know him, because he remains with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you orphans, I will come to you. In a little while the world shall no longer see me, but you will see me because I live and you shall live also. On that day you shall realize that I am in my Father and you are in me and I in you. This is the truth, peace be with you. Praise and blessings to Jesus Christ, our Lord and God. For giving us his world of life, praise and blessings to Jesus Christ, our Lord. This is the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. From the time of the fathers, the knowledge of theology, what we call theology, is something very specific. These days it means anything to do with religion, basically. In fact, up to the point of having high school students who are taking theology classes. A little pretentious, I think, in titles, but that's what we've done to it. But theologia literally means that, that consideration concerning theos, God. And from the time of the fathers, and in the Eastern Church have always kept this understanding, is that theology is truly about the divinity, meaning specifically his nature, the Trinitarian relationships how God has revealed himself in that Trinitarian formula. That will be next week's feast day of the Holy Trinity. All the rest, what we talk about, the things that are external to God, all the rest of it is what we, was taken under the name of the divine economy, economia. So we use the word economy now about money and finance, but literally, Oikonomia means the government or the rulings of the house. Oikos is house, nomos is law. These are the rules about how the household is governed. That's what economy actually means. It doesn't mean market values. And so the fathers of the church use this idea of how God develops and forms his creation and the work of redemption, salvation as the divine economy. 
We've translated it usually in this red book, they translate it as the divine plan. Comes to the same idea. It's what is external to the divinity, outside of his nature being personal. So we have theology and the divine economy. And what we celebrate in Pentecost is the reminder to us of the revelation of what God is doing among us. So that the very central aspect and the greatest of all of the works that God does externally to his inner personal nature is the incarnation. It is the fact of God manifesting himself in the world, joining himself personally to human nature in the person of our Lord Jesus Christ. And all the rest of it, his life, death, and resurrection as we pray in the rosary, the life, death, and resurrection is the manifestation of that external work of God within our divine Lord. And of course, in one way, it is completely unique. It is very specific to one individual, born of the Virgin Mary. But in another way, it is also prefiguring us to understand what God is desiring by bringing us into the body of Christ, this term that we use for the church. And again, these terms are important for us too, at least on occasion, to actually stop and think about. Because calling the church the body of Christ, these types of things, sometimes we can think of it as being more or less poetry. But it really does mean to be engrafted into the personal life. Your hand is no less of your personal extension than your feet or any other part of your being. And what God's desire is to do is to transform his members. And that's why the calling, the very name of the word church, not in the Germanic languages, but the ecclesia, iglesia, that the Spanish use. That is the Greek word for calling, ecclesia. Our word church comes from Kyriake, what belongs to the Lord. They both have the meanings, but they have two different senses to them. And so we are called ecclesia in order to become Kyriake, to become belonging to the Lord. So our Lord in his incarnation is sanctified in the very fullness of grace. You have it in the beginning of the Gospel of St. John. Grace for grace. From his fullness we have all received. And what St. Thomas points out is that from our perspective, the grace that our Lord receives as a man, from our perspective, looks infinite. In itself, it's not infinite because no creature can be without limit. But from our perspective, it has that look. And all grace of redemption comes from that man who died upon the cross and rose from the dead. That God-man. And so all the grace that is given to us comes from our Lord in what St. Thomas calls the grace, the gratia capitis in Latin, the grace of being head. And that superabundance of grace is what St. John says that we receive from his fullness, grace for grace. Because as a man, he receives grace like any other individual man. As God, of course, he gives the sanctification. So there are two things that are actually shown in this incarnation. The primary one is that God's intention is that human beings, human nature, be personally united to God. So that the person of the Word who's incarnate of the Blessed Virgin Mary, born into this world, it is meant to show us in the divine economy that every single one of us, you, I, everyone is meant to be called into that personal union with God. The second thing is, is the desire of the sanctification, that fullness of grace that is given to Christ to be the head of his body. That is the presence of the Spirit. And that is what Pentecost is manifesting to us. And all of this kind of theological vocabulary, I suppose, this morning, is meant for us to understand Pentecost why this is the holiest day of the year after Easter. Not Christmas, not any other day, Pentecost. Because Pentecost in the divine economy is the manifestation of God's work in that which we call the church. So I've written up also in the bulletin on it, so you have another aspect of consideration. It's why in the celebration of the season, 
We have the celebration of seven weeks of weeks. So the seven weeks of weeks, the 49 days. This day crowns as the 50th, which is all that Pentecost means in Greek, is 50. And then this 50th day is extended into a week of days. And so this is why we spent a month on a week and what the seven days actually mean and what the Kyriake, what the Lord's Day actually means. So this becomes the central Lord's Day, the central Kyriake as being the crowning of the 50th of the seven weeks of weeks and then extended out for the octave of the seven days celebrated in this week. And it's to remind us that we are called to this holiness which ultimately is invisible. Sometimes we forget the fact that after our Lord's resurrection, he never appeared to anyone except to those who were already to some degree believers. He never goes to the temple and says, ha ha, see, I beat you. Now, that's pettiness, that's far too human. We do that, we always say, ha, see, you didn't kill me after all. But our Lord, what he does is because that transformation is to those who are already disposed to see him. It's why in the gospel today, our Lord says, I will give you another comforter. I give you another advocate. But the world cannot receive him because it does not know him, the spirit of truth. And if you remember those apparitions, the manifestations of our Lord in his resurrection to the individuals, they're all different. St. Mary Magdalene, when she goes to the tomb, she doesn't recognize our Lord. This is the idea of the disposition to see. It's in the husoyo as being the worthiness, that you give us your holiness and your gifts according to our worthiness. It doesn't mean our intrinsic worthiness in the sense of being a creature. It means in our disposition to hear the voice of truth. And that's why for Mary Magdalene, in the beginning, she thinks our Lord is a gardener. But it only takes one word, her name, Mariam, and she immediately recognizes the man that she's already been talking to. The disciples of Emmaus, they walk with our Lord the whole afternoon long. They walk with him throughout much of the day and never recognize him. And for St. John, St. John who runs to the tomb with St. Peter, he doesn't even see our Lord. All he does is by looking into the tomb, he sees linens folded up. And that's all he needs to have to recognize the resurrection. So everyone is disposed in a way to see, depending upon their choices they make in their life and corresponding to grace. And that disposition is exactly what our Lord is talking about at the Last Supper here, this chapter 14 that I give you a paraclete that those who are disposed will be able to receive this spirit of truth. Because what God's desire is to do is to touch us in the very core of our being. All of us have the same human nature. Nobody is more human or less human. Anything conceived of human seed is human, period. No matter what it looks like, how it acts, it is human. And human nature is exactly the same in everyone. But the personality, who you are personally, that uniqueness, that is the very core of your existence that makes you distinctly you. And that, that is non-replicatable. There has never been this individual from the creation of the world, and there will never be this individual person before the day of judgment. Human beings, they'll be. Human beings, there were before us. Human beings, they'll be after us. But the person that you are individually will never be replicated. And that complete uniqueness that makes you, you, that makes the I, I, that is what God desires to touch by the spirit of truth. So on one hand, we celebrate a historical event, but what we are turning to embrace 
is a personal reality of God speaking to us spirit to spirit. And those tongues of fire that come down and bring these languages of all these different nations, that's a historical moment. But that reality of those tongues of fire coming down upon us is the reality of all of the aspect of why you've received the Catholic faith, why you've received the apostolic faith, is to be touched in the very inner core of your being, transfigured, and in a certain sense, turned inside out. And sometimes in our lives, the things that God asks of us, we feel very much being turned inside out. Our Lord has never promised that the path is easy. On the contrary, he has said over and over again that it requires carrying the cross, not because he desires pain, but because he desires personal transformation. And that path of death and resurrection is replicated uniquely in each one of our lives. This little tiny gospel we have today of four lines is one of the very most profound and central mystic texts that we have in the New Testament. Our Lord is telling the apostles at the Last Supper exactly what grace is supposed to do to you. And that, that's why you know so many apostate Catholics. They refused to be turned inside out. They refused to receive that grace and that light to lead them on paths that they did not foresee. And then it's apprehension. Then it becomes fear. And in the midst of modern distraction, it's easy just simply to fall away and wither up. On human psychology, the collapse of so many Christians from the spirit of truth is very understandable. But from the point of view of the divine economy, it is the greatest cosmic tragedy possible. When a human being in their unique existence for a few years of life should be distracted by screens and gizmos or even other people from the spirit of truth to be drawn away, it's tragic beyond description. But it's why we honor the martyrs. It's not to tell nice stories about St. Agatha and St. Sebastian and have a holy card. It's to show what grace actually does do in our lives, even if we're not asked to actually physically die for the faith. God is asking for us to be turned inside out and to become individuals that we perhaps do not, we certainly can't foresee, and very oftentimes are afraid to become. So when we pray on Pentecost, we're praying for a light and a grace and a truth to illuminate our spirits and to fortify our wills that that fire that our Lord says, I have come to cast fire upon the earth, that that fire be truly enkindled within our spirits and that the unique person that I individually am become exactly the I in the divine economy that the Lord God has wanted me to become from before creation even began. With that strength and that fire, then we begin to understand what it means to be engrafted and incorporated into the one body of Christ and to, to become truly kiriakon, church. Doesn't mean going somewhere. It means to truly become this which belongs to the Lord. And it's by the Spirit of God that these miracles are done. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.
believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial to the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and he became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we confess one baptism to the forgiveness of sins. We look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world. Amen. Lord and God, you accepted the offerings of our ancestors. Now accept these offerings that your children have brought to you out of their love for you and for your holy name. Shower your spiritual blessings upon them, and in place of their earthly gifts, grant them life and your imperishable kingdom. As we remember our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ and his plan of salvation for us, we recall upon this offering all those who have pleased God from Adam to this day, especially Mary, the Blessed Mother of God, our Holy Father, St. Joseph, her spouse, the Chosen One, our Holy Father, St. Mary and St. Jude, and the prophet Tobias. Remember, O God, the children of the Holy Church, our fathers and mothers, and our brothers and sisters, both the living and the departed, especially those for whom this sacrifice is offered, for the intentions of all the members of this parish. Remember also all those who share with us today in this offering.
Continue with the anaphora of St. James, brother of the Lord, on page 794, 794. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. O God, the Father, lover of all people, though we are unworthy, make us worthy of salvation. Purified of deceit and hypocrisy, and united in the bond of love and peace, through our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, may we give one another the greeting of peace with a holy kiss. We glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, who is good, life-giving, and consubstantial with you, now and forever. Peace to you, O holy altar of God. Peace to the holy mysteries placed upon you. Peace to you, O server of the minister of God. Peace to you, O server of the Holy Spirit. Let us give the greeting of peace to his neighbor with love and faith, which is pleasing to the Lord. Merciful Lord, you dwell on high and look down upon the earth. Through the grace of your only Son, send your blessings upon those who bow before your holy altar. We glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. O God, the Father, in your love for all people, you send your Son into the world to bring the lost sheep back to you. Do not turn your holy face away from us as we celebrate this spiritual and bloodless sacrifice, relying on your mercy and through the grace of your only Son, we ask that this mystery, instituted for our salvation, not be for our condemnation. Rather, may it blot out all our sins, forgive our faults, and be an expression of our thanks for your goodness. We glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The love of God the Father, and the grace of the only begotten Son, and the communion and indwelling of the Holy Spirit, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. Let us lift up our thoughts, our minds, and our hearts. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord with reverence and worship him with humility. It's right and just to glorify you, bless you, praise you, adore you, and give you thanks, O Maker of all things, visible and invisible. The highest heavens and all its powers praise you, the sun, the moon, and all the stars, the earth, the seas, and all that is in them, the heavenly Jerusalem, and the assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven. The angels, archangels, and all the heavenly host all sing praising your majestic glory with triumphant hymns, with never-ending voices, and with sweet acclamations. They cry out and they proclaim. commandment and fell, you did not abandon us, but like a good and merciful Father you instructed us. Through the law you called out to us, through the prophets you guided us, and at the appointed time you sent your Son, our Lord and God Jesus Christ, into the world to renew your image. He came down and by the Holy Spirit became flesh of the Holy and ever Virgin Mary and dwelt among us, accomplishing all things for our salvation. Kyrie eleison, wabiyamo haudoktum hashod ilema bedchaye, and some lachmo mida kori shantu ubara chukodesh waksuya biltar mida karomara sabachula mene kulchun hono delita fakhano dila Dachlo faikun wachlo psagie metapaseu metiheb Chusoyon chame wa choyed an alam alamin Amen 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 Barach hu Qadesh, hu yabil talmita hu karomara, saab ishtawa mehne kul khuhu, hu no denita hu, demohu dila diyati ki khadato, dakhlo faikun wakhlof saagiyen, Et he shedu metihem Chusoyon Chame wa choyed al-ghalam al-ameen Amen 
my resurrection until I come again. We remember your death, O Lord. We profess your resurrection. We await your second coming. We implore your mercy and compassion. We ask for the forgiveness of sins. May your mercy rest upon us. O Lord, we remember your death, your resurrection, resurrection, your ascension into heaven, your sitting at the right hand of God the Father, and your glory is second coming, when you shall judge the world with justice and reward all people according to their deeds. Now we ask you, do not repay us according to our sins and transgressions, but in your compassion and love for all people, Cleanse us of all our sins. We, your people and your inheritance, implore you and through you and with you, implore your Father, saying, Have mercy on us, Almighty Father. Have mercy on us. O Lord, as we, your sinful children, receive your graces, we thank you for them and because of them. and he may make this bread a life-giving body, a saving body, a heavenly body, a body that redeems our souls and bodies, the body of our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins and eternal life for those who receive it. And make the mixture in this chalice the blood of the new covenant, a life-giving blood, a saving blood, a heavenly blood, a blood that redeems our souls and bodies, of the blood of our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins and eternal life for those who receive it. May these holy mysteries be for the sanctification of the souls and bodies of those who share in them, that they may excel in all good deeds. May they be for the strengthening of your holy church, which you have founded on the rock of faith, so that the gates of hell shall not prevail against her, delivering her from all heresies and doubts until the end of time and forever. We offer you, O Lord, this sacrifice for your holy church throughout the world and for the holy places that you have glorified by the presence of Christ your Son, especially for Zion, Jerusalem, mother of all the churches. Remember our pure bishops who spread the word of truth, especially our blessed fathers, Francis, the Pope of Rome, Bishara Peter, our Patriarch of Antioch, Gregory John, our Bishop, and all the orders of the Church and those who serve her. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, our parents and all our brothers and sisters 
those who are here praying with us and those who are not here and those who have asked us to remember them in our prayers. Answer the petitions that will lead them to salvation. Remember those who have presented the offerings upon your holy altar, those for whom they have been offered, and those who have desired to make an offer but were unable, those who we have remembered and those whom we have not. Reward them with the joy of your salvation. Accept their offering upon your heavenly altar. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, our civil leaders and clothe them in your fear that they may stand for justice and establish peace. Remember also captives and prisoners, the sick, the suffering, and the afflicted, the needy and those who labor in all walks of life. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, all those who have pleased you from the beginning, the holy and glorious ever-Virgin Mary, the patriarchs, prophets, and apostles, Saint John the Forerunner, Saint Stephen the Archdeacon and First Martyr, Saint James the Brother of our Lord, Saint Marin, Saint Joseph, and Prophet Tobias, and all the saints. In your grace, count us among them in the church of your firstborn who are enrolled in heaven. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, the fathers and teachers who spread the word of truth in your holy church and preached your Son, Jesus Christ, to all nations. Through their prayers, grant peace to your church and confirm their teachings in our souls. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O God, of all spiritual and earthly beings, the faithful departed who have died in the true faith. Grant them rest and do not take their faults into account. Through our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, who is without sin, we hope to find mercy and forgiveness for our sins and for theirs. Grant rest, O God, to the departed, and forgive the sins we have committed, with or without full knowledge. Grant us pardon, O God, and forgive us and the departed, so that your blessed name may be glorified in us and in all things. With the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and of your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. As it was, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. pleasing oblation who offered yourself for us. You are the forgiving sacrifice who offered yourself to your Father. You are the high priest who offered yourself as the Lamb. Through your mercy may our prayer rise like incense, which we offer to your Father through you. To you, you be glory forever. O, Lo o God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Father of mercies and God of all consolation, 
You have sanctified the offerings and the gifts presented to you and have perfected them by the grace of your only Son and by the descent of your Holy Spirit. Sanctify us so that with pure hearts and enlightened souls we may call upon you, O Holy Father, God of heaven, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Yes, O Lord, our God, lead us not into temptation that we do not have the strength to endure. But when we are tempted, deliver us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. We glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Let us bow our heads before the God of mercy, before his forgiving altar and before the body and blood of our Savior, who gives life to those who partake of him, and receive the blessing from the Lord. O Lord, we bow our heads before you, awaiting your abundant mercy. Send your blessings upon us and sanctify us, so that we may become worthy to share in your holy mysteries. Through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and his mercy and love for all people. You are blessed and glorified with him and your Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. The grace of the most holy trinity, eternal and consubstantial, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your spirit, let each one of us look to God with <clears throat> reverence and humility and ask him for mercy and compassion. Holy gifts for the holy with perfection, purity, and sanctity. One Holy Father, one Holy Son, one Holy Spirit, blessed be the name of the Lord, for he is one in heaven and on earth. To him be glory forever. Make us worthy, O Lord God, so that our bodies may be sanctified by your holy body and our souls purified by your forgiving blood. May our communion be for the forgiveness of our sins and for new life. <clears throat> o Lord our God, to you be glory forever.
Again and again we thank you, O Lord, and we raise glory to you for giving us your body to eat and your living blood to drink. O lover of all people, have mercy on us. We thank you, O God the Father, for your great and indescribable love for all people. Since you have made us worthy to share in your heavenly banquet and in your Holy Spirit, do not forsake us for having received your holy mysteries, but keep us in the radiance of holiness and righteousness. With the saints, may we obtain a share in the heavenly reward through the grace of your only Son and his love for all people. <clears throat> we glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, who is good, life-giving, and consubstantial with you, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. <clears throat> o Jesus, our Lord, bless us, protect us, guide us on the path of life. Favorably remember the departed of those who have shared in this Eucharist, that was offered upon this divine altar. Grant protection to the living and bless them with hope, 
through the prayers of the Virgin Mary and all the saints, now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the nourishment and blessings you have received from the forgiving altar of the Lord. May the blessing of the Most Holy Trinity accompany you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, the one God, to whom be glory forever. <coughs> Thank <laughs> you.